like I believe the people are responsible for the government they elect. You know, in this country, we had a government who did not dance around the climate change issue. They were very clear about where they stood. They were very clear about where they stood when it comes to industry. They were very clear about how they, where the environment ranked on their list of priorities. Canadians knew it. Canadians elected. This is what Canadians want. Well, I think sometimes the people don't quite know what they're getting. Um, it isn't always uh, clear what they're getting at the time that they vote. And uh, my guess is that uh, you know the people of Canada didn't expect that they were uh, voting for a government that would be censoring their scientists, that wouldn't be uh, allowing uh, the scientists who are actually studying the impacts of climate change to talk to the media, to talk to you. Yeah, scientists have to now get their questions, or they have to get their questions and answers vetted, don't they, by the government or by certain departments? Well, you know, this was the way it was in the previous administration in the U.S. Um, and I have colleagues who were not allowed uh, to talk to the media without first going through a, uh, a public relations person. Um, and they were often denied the opportunity to talk to the media. And instead, uh, journalists were being redirected to scientists who shared the administration's outlook on the problem. And what's uh, concerning to me is that it appears now that that culture, that ethos, has now sort of uh, um, spread across the, the border. And uh, it's what you're now seeing here in Canada. In the scientific community, is everybody on board? Is there a percentage? Of, I mean, we hear about scientists who come out and who, who dispute it. What is the percentage of those who don't necessarily agree with this? Yeah, so it, it's interesting because, you know, sometimes in the media, um, the problem is presented as if there's, um, you know, a debate between two equal sides, you know, scientists who believe in, uh, uh, you know, climate change and those who don't. It's not like that. First of all, it isn't a matter of belief. It's a matter of following the facts where, where they leave, uh, lead you. And that's, you know, what we do in science. And the facts are very clear on this problem. And so it's extremely difficult to find a real climate scientist, and I'm talking about somebody who goes to meetings and presents papers, who publishes in the peer-reviewed literature, who will contradict the basic things, uh, uh, the basic aspects of the problem. But it's easy to find some iconoclast, right, and, and put them up on a pedestal and uh, pretend that there's a debate about this, when in fact there isn't a debate about the reality of the problem. We can have a worthy debate about what to do about it, mm -hmm. but we can't have a good faith debate anymore about the reality of the problem.